James Ernest with the Grill and Truth here with Susan from Tops. Susan, uh, tell us uh, of Tops. A lot of people, th you know, think they created baseball cards, but they didn't. But they did, in my opinion, revolutionize and modernize the world of uh, card collecting. Would that be a true statement or a correct statement? Um, yeah, actually. What cards that you know today, where you sort of have like a two and a half by three and a half, like that kind of card, mm -hmm. that was essentially came from Tops. You're looking at 1952 Tops baseball, where you know we had this. You know, this top, the cards were slightly bigger back then, but like they added the, the color, of the picture to it. Some at yeah, the time they were like portraits and they were painted, but it really changed the way that people looked at baseball cards with 1952 Tops. Excellent. So they went away from the the, pack, uh, the tobacco and that kind of thing and, and the different sizes of cards and focused on, like you said, uh, the modern card. Yeah, definitely. I mean, everybody, like a lot of collectors and even people outside the collecting world uh, know the name Cy Berger. People call him because he, he was instrumental in the 1952 set and you know, people call him the grandfather of modern baseball cards. If you could have any card Pre tops, post tops. What would you want? Um, nineteen thirty three Gaudi Lou Gehrig. But for some reason, the card is always just like it's so beautiful to me. I love seeing that card. I do not own it, and uh, I would love to own those cards. That is awesome. I'm surprised you didn't go with the the standard answer. So I got to give you a lot of credit. Of course, the the Honus Wagner. Well, if I'm looking for you know an investment in my future, and I have future. Yeah, uh, Honus Wagner, but uh, that, for my personal collection, personal collection. Yeah, that, that Gary sure. card is just amazing. Nice. So, of uh, the Topps cards, what is the uh, the best Topps card ever? Um, I mean, it depends on you and what you like, but traditionally, like, the card that right now is currently the hottest of vintage cards is the 1952 Topps Mickey Mantle. It was his first Topps card ever produced. People tend to call it his rookie card, but it actually is not his rookie card. 1951 Bowman was his rookie card, which was uh, not a Topps company just yet, but that was his rookie card. However, his 1952 Topps card is still more popular than that, and it's probably, I mean, if you look at auctions, like, this card goes into this good, good, good condition of the 1952 Topps, sells in the six figures. Wow, that is awesome. So, if... Um what sparked the change from 1950 to 52, how they went from just, you know, cards to collecting in the sets? Yeah, I mean, so the story goes, because I can only go, you know, you know, as the story's been told down, um, you know, it, it was a, traditionally the cards were made, to, it wasn't like you, we, you know, the cards were made are made now, so you buy the cards. The cards were made as a, as a just sort of a bonus for the candy that Topps made, because Topps started as a, a candy company, and we actually still do make candy. We make bazooka and ring pops and uh, baby bottle pops and, oh, you know, all this other candy and all this gum, um, but it was a way for, you know, you would buy the candy, and oh, it's like, cool. I get this bonus card out of it. Um, and then it sort of just changed a little bit because, like, you know, how can we get more people to buy candy? Well, let's add then these really great picture cards. So even back then, it was more of a way to drive gum sales as opposed to, like, buying baseball cards. Now, you can't get gum in packs anymore, and people are buying the cards just for the cards. Oh, nice. Um, so how big was that purchase in 1956 of Bowman? How, uh, how did that impact the company? Um, well, it was a big competitor at the time. So you're looking at a company, you know, we had these two big competitors who, you know, one company signing these guys, another company signing other guys. So if you wanted, like, a full set of all, like, the great players, you couldn't get them in one place. So one of the ways to, I guess, get rid of competition was to buy the competition. So now you had one company who was able to have Ben your canal, you had Ted Williams in your pack, and you could have Mickey Mantle in your pack, and you could have all those guys in your in your pack of cards because if, if they were between Bowman and Tops, you couldn't you couldn't get all of the star players in, on one in one company's packs. But I own some Bowman cards from like 1980 something. If you bought Bowman in 1956, how is that? Uh, we, we own Bowman, we own the name, so we, so Tops for years, obviously, like you said, going back to the 80s, 90s, but even now, 
now we still create bowling cards. It's just oh. a different line of cards that we make. So at the time, you know, back in the 90s, it was like, you know, it's called it like home of like a player's first rookie card. So you have those like goofy shots of like Marion Rivera and Chipper Jones with like in their street clothes and those are their rookie cards. Now it's, it's changed. You know, Tops has, you know, developed a different path for the Bowman product, which is actually focused more on prospects. So now they're not rookie cards anymore, they're prospect cards. But it's still, it's still owned by Tops. But when you look at Bowman now, like the cards that you're going to get in, you know, a pack of Bowman this year included, you know, Rafael Beavers before he got called up. And like last year, 2013 included Aaron Judge, Aaron Judge's first Bowman card, which is within the collecting community. It is the first Bowman card that's extremely popular. Oh, nice. Yeah, you know, I was going to say, I can imagine uh, the judge has been uh, a popular request from y'all. Yeah, the judge is that his first Bowman, his first Bowman autograph card has been uh, getting a lot of attention on the secondary market. Like, there's been stories done about it. You're looking like low parallels, which, you know, tops, you, you, we, we make a card, but they will have different color parallels on that card, and some of the low numbered parallel cards, highly graded, green green condition, uh, the one that autograph, again, have sold it in the five figures. You're looking at like twenty thousand dollars that Dang. they have sold for. Them. Oh my! Yeah, it's uh, it's all crazy. <laughs> so uh, my grandma throwing away, you know, my dad's cards. Uh, you know, uh, the you know my uncles when they were kids putting the cards in the boat and the spikes of the uh, the bikes, that kind of thing. Uh, so the fact that there's less cards from those time periods does that help collecting or hurt collecting? So it depends on them. It hurts the collectors who are trying to find those cards in good condition. But for people who have invested in cards, it probably helps them because then it it increases the value of those cards because then there are less cards out there in really good condition. Was uh, taking the gum out of the cards a tough decision at the time? I mean, obviously you weren't there, but you know. Um, it's actually something that we kind of had to do. Um, there's a lot of rules in place when it comes to including edibles, essentially, in anything. So if we wanted to include gum, there's a lot of sort of rules behind it. And uh, it was a little more difficult to get, like, to do it in a costly, cost efficient manner to, to, to include the gum impact. So while it was, you know, probably to, to this day, people still like, hey, why don't you have gum impact? We want gum impact. Um, it just wasn't something that, like, we, we could do anymore. When do you feel uh, collecting was at its peak? I mean, was it back then when it was, you know, so many people doing it? Or say, like, now when it's more, you know, intense collectors? Yeah, I think it went through a lot of peaks and valleys. You know, some of them were, like, back in the late 80s, early 90s, where every, you know, everybody was collecting cards. And there's another peak going on, actually, right now, where, you know, people are collecting cards right now because baseball is extremely popular, especially with the younger players. So you have guys, you know, like Mike Trout, Chris Bryant, Bryce Harper, Aaron Judge, Gary Sanchez, you know, I can just keep going on names, who are bringing so much attention to baseball that it translates over into baseball cards as well. And, uh, you know, I think right now we're actually in one of those peaks. Nice. Uh, what's your thoughts on digital collecting? Um, I think it's a lot of fun for people who, you know, don't get a chance to maybe have a card shop in their area or even people like, you know, you're on the train or you're on the bus so you want to do anything like, man, I really want to open a pack of cards right now. Oh, cool, let me open my phone and check out my cards. It's a lot of fun. It's something, because um, we have a couple of different apps. We have a football, we have a baseball, we have a hockey, we have Star Wars, The Walking Dead, uh, we have several different apps. Um, I got really hooked into the Star Wars app for a while. Mm -hmm. So I was, like, chasing uh, the cards of, like, a certain character. And it's really, it gets really after <laughs> a while, like anything. If you're a collector, it's really just a lot of fun. Because what's cool, too, is there's a trading aspect to it. So it's not that, like, you're living in the silo of just, like, opening a pack of cards and that's it. You actually can trade on the app as well and, like, you know, find other people who are willing to trade your cards for their cards. And it's a lot of fun. Oh, nice. So, like you were saying, if you're trying to get all the R2-D2 cards, you can trade your doubles of Darth Vader or whatever. Exactly. That's, and that's exactly what's it was. Like, I remember during the, uh, when I first came out, there was, uh, like, an award, because there's different award levels, too, because there's also a gamification 
process as well. Um, with the sports app, there's a, there's a fantasy element behind them as well. You can play certain players, like tonight if I wanted to play, say, I don't know, I'm just trying to, if I don't remember, it's like fantasy baseball. Like, okay, I have these guys pitching and these guys hitting. I'm going to play them in my lineup. You can get points then from that, and then from if you get the most points, like in the group that you're playing against, you can either get more coins on the app or you get a pack of cards. Like there's a, like there's a gamification process going on as well. So you get the fantasy element, you get the collecting element, and then you also have the sort of like I need to do something right now kind of element going on, like the instant gratification of it. Oh, cool. So yeah, so it's not just they're just sitting there taking out space. You're participating. You're being social. That sounds well rounded. It sounds awesome. Yeah, it's just really a lot of fun. There's uh, like, and, and it sounds like they don't want to social media because like I see a lot of people like especially on Twitter just talking about like you know the different apps and you know looking for trades outside of that and stuff like hey, can anybody have like the top of the bump app? It's the base one. I'm mm -hmm. looking to trade for so and so. So people really have a lot of fun with it. What was the difference between uh, eTops and then the Tops Bunt that you just mentioned? So eTops was um, a portal that sort of, I'm trying to think, like, almost like, I feel like it was like in a way that it was like more stock market-like, mm -hmm. like there was sort of like IPOs, like they would give out cards for like certain players, and there was only a certain amount of cards that they could give out, but it was limited, and these were physical cards. So you could, you while you would have them in your portfolio, mm -hmm you can get them and then ship to you. So they're actually be physical cards. Whereas the digital cards are just digital cards. They live on you they live on your app. I think that um e tops is more closely resembled to our Tops Now program that we do. Mm -hmm. Um Tops Now is uh, I don't know if you're aware of what it is. It's a, like a twenty it's a twenty four hour program. So what we do is we take the greatest moments in baseball and offer them the next day. And they're only available for twenty four hours and you can only get them on tops.com. So within that 24-hour window, however many people purchase the card, those are the only, that's the only amount that we print. So if 300 people buy a card, we're only gonna print 300. 10, 11,000 people who, are, that's what we showed last year, so 11,000 something cards, mm -hmm. we printed 11,000 something cards. So it's more closely resembles the, the tops now, e tops more closely resembles tops now than I think the digital apps, because it is a physical product. Cool. So I definitely need to look into Tops now. Not that I think that the Reds are going to have that uh, play. I forgot who it was, too. But they had a player earlier this season hit four home runs in a game. Oh, yeah. We made a Scooter Gannett card of uh, when he hit those four home runs. We made that. And additionally, the very, very next day, we had his card available for 24 hours. And what was cool is that we actually offered an autograph version. So the Scooter Gannett was able to sign those cards and you were able to purchase an autograph version and then get the letter right out of your mailbox. Oh man, that'd be sweet. Yeah, it was, it was a lot of, when those, you gotta see when those moments happen, like, there's a bunch of us who are watching the games at night and like, we just, we're just kind of like, well, what's gonna happen in baseball tonight? So right now it's exciting because like, the Cleveland Indians just won their 21st game yesterday. So that's gonna, you know, the card goes up today, it's gonna go up later today and it's, it's, it's really crazy to just, uh, get to like see everything home happening in baseball because other people have said and not just tops employees but people who enjoy the program you're able to follow baseball in a way that you never really did before suddenly now you're paying like way more attention to teams that like you never really even considered before because anything can happen on any given night so when that uh, pitcher throws uh, the perfect game next day it's up there or say mm -hmm. uh um, Ichiro ends up uh, breaking some type of record because he's been around forever. It's up there. That's pretty cool. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Definitely. So what is the true value of collecting? Is it the joy of, you know, feeling like you're a part of the, the team? Is it, you know, the bond that you com uh, connect with family and friends? Is it, uh, you know, the feeling of accomplishment when you open that pack and get uh, get the right card that you're looking for? You know, what what do you feel? Yeah, I think it's different for everybody because collecting, well, like, there's thousands, there's not millions of people who collect. It's still a very personal hobby. And for me personally, like, I have a huge collection and I love pulling cards of, you know, my favorite players because I'm more of what they call a player collector. Like, I don't collect specifically keys, I just collect the players I like. But what I really get the most joy out of is actually 
opening cards with my family. Like, we sit there, we go through the cards, and we talk about the cards, and we really have a lot of fun with it. And for me, it's such a cool family element, because, like, it's me and my husband, and then my kid, my, like, my son, he's still really young, but, like, he sometimes he'll just sit there and look at the cards, and it's kind of cool, like, just to see his sort of reaction of, like, how he sees the cards, and, like, and I share it with, like, my nieces and my nephews, and it's really, for me, the element of, like, doing this hobby with my family is really to me is the best part and that's how I define like the value I can't I can't get that anywhere else I know what you mean shoot uh, when I was growing up same thing me and my dad uh, he would he'd get a box of cards and like we'd be on a family trip and all and you know every so many hours because you know shoot when you're driving the car it gets boring you'd sure. open up another pack of cards and it was always nice yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. Same thing with, like, my dad, he didn't, it wasn't really into sports, but, you know, when I was a kid, it was my brother and my cousins. I'd see them opening packs of cards and, like, trading them, and I'm like, I want to do that, too. <laughs> you know? So that's how I got into collecting. So how old's the youngin? Um, almost 14 months, so, yeah, he's still really young, but okay. he, sometimes he just goes straight for the cards, like, and he'll, he'll avoid all his toys and go straight for the cards and just kind of look at them, because I guess he likes all the colors on them. Cool. Yeah, I know what you mean. My little guy's young too. I mean, he's not that little, but he's he's pretty little. He's six, and he's starting to get into him as well, and starting to starting to take interest, and it's it's awesome. That's really cool. I'm looking I'm looking forward to that one. We get. <laughs> what so? What's your favorite type of specialty card? The autograph, the game worn, uh, the milestone cards. What's what's your favorite type? I'm I like these cards. Yeah, I know it's 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 might it might be boring to some people, but I like the base card because they just you know I like because for a while while I worked at Tops, one of my jobs, my first job was actually it was I was a person who picked the images that went on the cards themselves, and it was such a cool job. You know, you're opening a pack of cards and you're like, wow, I did that, I made that card, and it was so important to me to find like the perfect image because I remember when you you know you're opening a pack of cards, you know seeing a picture of like, man, that's cool. There's so many cards, like, you would remember, like, when you got older because of the image on the card. And for me, I just, like, I love these cards. I like to go through the cards just to see, like, what a guy is doing. Like, you see, in the middle of swing, sometimes I like to try to guess, like, what happened on that specific play. Did he actually strike out? Oh, was it a pop? Oh, I don't know about that card, you know? So, for me, it's a base, the base card because it really brings all the excitement in opening a pack of cards. Tell me what, that was your first job there? Uh, yeah, so it's it, it called a sports editor, yeah. and your first job, you, like, as a sports editor, you're picking the images, you're editing the text on the back, and there's a lot more to it, but, like, the glamorous part of the job is you have to pick the images. So okay, because I'm like, how do you get to start at, like, the best job ever? Yeah, that, <laughs> yeah I was going to say that. There's like, a lot more to it. It's not just picking the images. It's, oh, it's a lot okay. of work. Cool. But, like, you know, the glamorous part of the job is picking the images. Oh, definitely. That would be amazing, yeah, getting to decide between... I mean, because I can imagine some of the, the more popular players have, you know, hundreds of shots to choose from where, you know, some of the other players, maybe not as many. But, yeah, that, that does sound just insanely awesome. I was going to say, I got to do that uh, a little bit for my arena team where we end up, because uh, uh, through Tops, you know how you all have that program where you can customize your own cards? I have a custom cards. I, I use those quite, quite frequently for myself, yeah. Cool. So when uh, you want to send out that family photo, you make your own tops card. Exactly. First kids, first birthday, we made a, we made a card. So uh, <laughs> you know, my Christmas card last year was um, a tops custom card. You know, so yeah, I love those custom cards. <laughs> that is awesome. Shoot, that is that is pretty cool. Let's see. If you were given someone who was just starting collecting advice, you know, what sport should they collect? What player should they collect? You know, how uh, should they store their cards, that kind of thing? Should they do packs or specific cards? You know, what would you what would you recommend? Um, well, that's right. Like, uh, any sport is, you know, whatever, whatever your favorite sport is. That's where I would say, like, what is your favorite sport? What is your favorite team? Like, you find the focus. Don't just, like, jump in and start, like, opening everything that you can find because it's, it's going to get overwhelming. Because there's a lot, there's a lot of different types of cards that are out there. So I would say, like, first, find what your focus you'd want it to be. Do you want it to be a player collector? Do you want to collect teams? Do you want to complete sets? You know, like, what, what is it that specifically, like, you're looking for out of this hobby? And when you figure it out, then the next steps are much easier. 
Um, but I'd always recommend opening top slide fan, but like series one baseball if you're a big baseball fan, because you're going it's it's the first product of the year and you know, it comes right as spring training is about to start. So if you love baseball it gives you that sort of like, all right, the new season's coming, here we go. Like it's a it's really a lot of fun. But like I said, just find a focus. Like make sure what you're focusing on because then if you try to do everything you're gonna it's you're not going to enjoy it as much as you would if you figure out what you want your collection to be first. So like you were saying, it can get kinda of overwhelming with just how many amazing options uh, Tops has. Exactly, because, like, even for me, like, I, like, while I love cars, I'm a big collector, I don't open everything because, you know, some of the products, you know, they're not for me, you know, but they're for other people, they're for other types of collectors. So I stick to, like, the types of things that I like. What do you feel the uh, future of collecting holds? Um, you know, the Toss Down program is really something that started last year, and I think the sort of instant gratification, you know, the Toss Down cards, the digital trading card apps, I think there's also going to be a lot of that going on because people really want that customization, and people really enjoy, like, this cool moment happened, how can I, like, commemorate it? So I think Tops Now and the digital trading card apps are sort of where, like, the future of collecting is going, but, like, traditional collecting, that doesn't seem to be going away anytime soon, either. I was going to say, um, shoot, I, I don't know if it would be considered morbid or not, so I don't want to come off that way. But with the, the tops now, are they going to have any, like, crem, uh, uh, clement, crem, memoriam cards? Like, say, if, unfortunately, one of the legends passed, kind of an honorary commemorative uh, card, that kind of thing? Yeah, generally we don't make those types of cards, so probably not. Okay. Yeah, because I don't mean like in a you know in a bad way, but like say you know. Oh sort of no, I understand. Yeah, like because in the past there was actually like we're talking about like decades ago in, in packs there were sort of immemorial cards for certain players that had passed away, like like in player current players in season that kind of things. But um, we haven't made those types of cards recently, and probably won't. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I don't mean like current. Like I'm saying if. Hank Aaron passes, or yeah, no, I understand. Uh, like, yeah, that's probably probably still in that. We would we would look at other ways to okay, honor him. Maybe in the next year, put out like a set of his highlights or something that kind of. Thing. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. Uh, let's see. Where? Oh, is there a museum or factory uh, people can tour? Unfortunately, no. Um, we have to. Two of our big locations, one's in New York City, and other our offices. Um, it's not like there's no tours available here. And then we have a factory in Pennsylvania, same thing. There's just no tours. And we, we, we have talked about sort of having like um, a traveling museum, like at the different shows that we go to, so people can see like all the different types of cars we've made over the years. So it's something that we've really talked about a lot recently. Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah, like uh, like a big bus or something, or an RV kind of uh, feel to it. Yeah, it'd be a lot of, I think people would really enjoy it. That would be nice, yeah. I was going to say that, and, you know, shoot, I'm biased, but I think there should be maybe a uh, Topps Hall of Fame down the road, you know, that kind of thing, so we could all, you know, travel up to it and, uh, you know, be able to explore uh, Topps, either in New York, like you said, Pennsylvania, or maybe adjacent to uh, Cooperstown somewhere. Yeah, that'd be really cool. That would be awesome. I'd go, I'd go. <laughs> So what's the best social uh, media things to learn more about Tops? Yeah, I mean, we're on the big three ones, like Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and you can find us at Tops. That's our, our social handles on all of them. And, you know, we post pictures of new trading cards and share content of old cards. And, you know, if you have questions for us, we can answer your questions. If not, we can certainly direct you to the best place to get your answers. What's, um, you know, any final thoughts that, you know, people should know about tops or collecting? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. You know, I love guys this, and I love collecting. I collected since I was a kid, and, you know, working at tops has been a great experience because I get to see it every day and enjoy this hobby with, you know, not only my family, but then other people who work here as well. So, you know, collecting cards is really a great experience, and it should be you know, something everybody should try out if you haven't done so yet. And if you collected when you were a kid and you haven't done it in a while, 
pick up a pack. You'll, uh, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised and find it really enjoyable.